So in the previous video, we stopped at uh, we stopped at this stage, right? We were trying to actually create a, a pillar grid, but uh, we had some problems, right? So we're doing pillar grading, and then we're trying to create a new 3D demo grid, right? A 3D grid, and then IJ and increment. Uh, is like 100 meters and then if we click on apply here then it's going to tell us that all pillars in the selected arbitrary fold are truncated you have to direct the fold in the i or j direction the problem pillars are selected so let's close this and then the the selected pillar the selected pillar is actually from here to here right and that's actually on the truncating fold so the problem is that uh, for the because the because the, the truncating fold is, it, it does not stop here, right? It's actually the the entire thing is actually the truncating fold. So 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 Patrol actually requires you to actually set the entire truncating fold to a specific I or J direction, right? Um, so in that case, all we have to do is actually to sort of First, let's let's turn my, turn my cursor into the selecting mode, and then let's just uh, click on this pillar, and then hold down the shift key, and then select this pillar. And then all we have to do is to set this particular segment to J direction also. All right. So let's go to the full model and click on set J. All right. So now we have um, we have this segment that's also set as the J direction. Um, and at this point, if you actually, if you actually try to, uh, do pillar grading here, um, and then click on apply, then it's going to work. It's going to work and it's a picture will try to actually create the grid. And, um, the first grid that's created is actually in the, it's, it's actually the center grid. It's actually the, the grid that's actually in the middle. It's the middle word. So if you look at the shape, um, it looks looks pretty good actually. It looks pretty good, right? And it conforms to the boundary of the project, and also conforms to all the faults and then the I and J directions. And at this point, if we click on OK, then it's going to ask us. So mid skeleton grid has been generated. Do, do you want to continue generating the top and base skeleton grids? Right. Hint: inspect the three different skeleton grids after the three D grid is made. So, so, so this thing appears as a hint, but it's actually mandatory. We have to in, in realistic projects inspecting these three different skeleton grids are kind of a mandatory. We have to. We have to. It's a, it's a very much encouraged. To actually examine the 3D grids, right? Even if you are actually just building a static grid model, right? If you are if you are actually producing a, a grid for for dynamic simulations, then it's even more important to actually examine the 3D grid. If you have those inverted grids, then the simulation is not going to work. For static grids, for static model, it might be okay to have just a small percentage of inverted grids with negative volumes, that kind of thing. But for dynamic simulations, it's um, it's no good. It's no good. Let's click on yes. And then that's going to produce a new object that's inside of the demo model. And this object is called a 3D demo grid. That's the name that we sort of gave to the. Uh, that's the name that we specified in the in the in the pillar grading dialog box. And if we click on this um, object, we're going to be able to see some of the uh, items that's inside of this object. Right? The first thing we want to do is to actually examine the skeleton. So we've got top, mid, and base. So the mid grid is something that we have already seen, right? And uh, it's usually a good idea to actually start from the mid grid and examine um, the shape of the mesh, of the mesh, especially around those uh, four lines. And maybe it's a good idea for us to actually turn off the forward model so we can sort of focus on the shape of the uh, mesh, right? Um, uh, 
you have to sort of pay attention to the shape of the mesh at these kind of locations, right? For now, it's not a negative volume yet. It's not a flipped or inverted triangle. So, but this is the center grid, right? Um, for the for the for the top and the bottom, for the top and the base grid, uh, we may see even more. Uh, elements with strange shapes, right? It's important for us to actually uh, identify those elements with very strange shapes and then maybe go back to re-edit the Ford model and re-edit uh, the trend lines, right? Respecify those trend lines and, uh, and, 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 uh, and uh, make necessary changes. Right, so this is the mid grid. Let's look at the top. That's the top. So the top grid is actually built on the. Um, uh, it's a it's a pass through the sh the top shape points or top control points of every pillar, right? And uh, and again, we have to sort of pay attention to the mesh just around those four uh, those forts, the four lines. We have to sort of make. We have to sort of make sure that uh, the mesh is okay. Right, it looks like it's. I I myself haven't actually found any uh, bad elements. Right, later on, after we have inserted all the horizons and layers, we can actually compute some geometric attributes. For example, the volume, right? And then we can identify the elements with the negative volume. And if uh, those negative volume elements exceed a certain percentage, becomes uh, quite a significant in our mesh, then we will have to come back and re-edit the folds and re-edit uh, those trend lines and so on. But so far, so good. I haven't actually found any elements with uh, with very bad shape. And then that's the top, that's the top skeleton. Let's look at the base skeleton. And this kind of region are kind of a, make me nervous, um, but it looks like it's still okay, right? It's not giving me any, um, very bad shapes. At this stage, we have to be quite patient because um, because um, the workflow downstream workflow is going to depend upon the quality of the mesh that we are actually building right now. So the efficiency of our uh, later work actually depends very much upon the quality of the, of the work that we are doing right now. So So it looks like it's uh, it's uh, it's okay. It's it's, uh, it's not bad mesh, right? And uh, so at this point, we have actually obtained a three-dimensional demo grid, right? And uh, and underneath this demo grid, this three uh, D grid, in addition to the skeleton, we also have something that's called the folds. If we display them, so in the fold model. In the Ford model, all the folds are displayed, are displayed uh, like uh, like this kind of. Uh, let's go back to maybe three D window. Let's go to the three D window. So that's what the Ford actually looks like in the Ford model underneath the model, right? But let's uh, let's turn off that Ford model and look at the folds in the uh, in the in the in the in the three D grid, right? So they're displayed differently. So they actually look like. Uh, some kind of solid surfaces, right? 
and this might give us a better view of the 3D uh, faults. And for now, we don't have horizons yet because we haven't actually inserted any horizons into it yet, right? Uh, uh, those intersections will allow us to actually examine the model after we have finished building it. Um, we also have segment filter. We have segment one, two, three, four. Uh, we have um, quite a few segments. Um, let's go back to the 2D window. Uh, let's dis display the okay, the the mid skeleton. So that's segment one actually. Then that's segment two. Segment three. Segment four. If we want to remove any of the segments, all we have to do is to actually set the boundary of the segments to be um, not a boundary, right? Uh, suppose we want to select this one and show down the shift key. Also select this one. No, maybe it's um, it's not good. The hold down sh shift key maybe. Yeah, right click. Then maybe right click. No boundary. Right now it becomes gray. Right. Um, It's not working, but anyway, I'll explore this. I'll explore this part later on. Um, when when we actually were, when we were actually drawing the boundary, when we were actually drawing the boundary using this particular button, right? I was uh, I was connecting points on the forts, right, and then drawing the the. I was using the escape key to actually terminate the selection, right? But the but the but the but a better way is actually to use the N key on your keyboard. Every time you want to sort of start to draw a new segment, you can use the N key. Basically, you can use uh, the N key to draw the boundary to start a start a new boundary. Basically, so um, And at this point, let's go back to look at the horizon. The horizons. Okay. Uh, let's turn off the, the faults and look at the horizons. So, in the last video, we input the horizon data as contour lines, right? And then we actually build we actually build the we actually build the horizon surfaces from those contour lines, right? Um, but there's a problem with uh, the surface that we created. For example, if you look at uh, this particular region, right, uh, the deeper surfaces actually goes up and uh, penetrates through the upper surfaces, right? So suppose we display base here, that's space Cretaceous. And then if we look at top eve, top eve actually truncates through base Cretaceous. The reason is because uh, for this part of the model, we don't really have any kind of contour line to constrain the inter uh, interpolation. So you have this kind of strange behavior. What we, 
what we might want to do is actually to redo uh, those services. Now we have a project boundary, right? We can use this project boundary to actually control the region for reliable interpretation, uh, interpolation, right? So maybe it's a good idea to just uh, delete this, uh, delete this folder. Let's just delete it and re recreate the services. Um, so now let's uh, let's uh, make surface. Right, use this make surface button. Um, let's click on the delete key. And then reset everything, right? And now we can go back to the contour lines. Let's just select the base and point it in there. Uh, let's run for all main inputs in the same folder. But now for the boundary, for the boundary part, we can select the boundary project boundary as the boundary, right? Um, and then automatic for the geometry, let's select automatic from input data boundary, right? So it's going to use this particular boundary as the boundary for, for interpolation. Um, and then suggested settings for from input. Right? So the, the, the data that we're actually trying to interpolate is actually contour lines. So let's select contour lines. And once we have selected contour lines, then in the, alg the algorithms tab, automatically sort of set to the default kind of setting for contour lines. And at this point, let's just click on uh, OK. And now we're going to have a new set of um, horizon surfaces, right? Base, top eave, uh, top knees, uh, top tabard, right? So suppose uh, let's take a look at base, right? That's base. And then uh, top eave. Right. You still have some slight kind of a um, uh, overshoot at the very boundary, right? But the situation is actually a lot better. It's a lot better. It's a lot better. It's a, uh, another thing that you may want to adjust is the kind of color color scheme, right? So uh, maybe let's just double click on base. And then it's going to give us this uh, dialog box that allows us to specify the color. So uh, let's configure it. Let's just use limits defining color table and then let's uh, reset the, the max and min for the data that's kind of we, we have selected. And then let's just OK. And then OK. All right. So this may give us a better color contrast to look at the variation of the of the surfaces inside of our uh, project boundary. Right. Uh, where's our project boundary? Well, our project boundary is like uh, way on the top. So it's not a good idea. Though. So if we go to the 2D window, uh, for now it's displaying the skeleton, right? But we can also display, uh, say, base, base criteria, so we can see uh, the region that we're actually modeling. Right? Gives us a better idea about um, the region that we're actually modeling. So it looks like it looks like those four lines are actually quite consistent with the location of the contours. Right? So it's very, very, very well, very well aligned actually. And later on, uh, when we try to actually uh, look at the relation between those uh, structural features and those uh, distribution of the hydrocarbons, we will be able to actually uh, explore those kind of correlation uh, relations. So I'll stop this video here, and the next time we're going to try to actually insert the horizons. We'll try to insert the horizons into our uh, 3D demo grid. And then we'll divide those uh, horizons, we'll divide those uh, zones into uh, smaller intervals and try to populate uh, petrophysical properties.